Now we move to the last chapter, chapter 18, grammar technique and review. On the set, you will encounter four main question types. So we talked about all of these types, but let's take a look at them here. Um, you're going to have grammar, 13 types of grammar and punctuation rules. Uh, you saw questions where uh, they give you, for example, um, a hypothetical situation with was, and you need to choose where, so this is grammar. Uh, they uh, combine two sentences using a comma instead of semicolon or a colon. Again, this is punctuation rules, etc. So we're going to have some questions like this, almost 13. Uh, we're going to have tone and style. Uh, revising words, thesis, topic sentences, adding or emitting content. Understanding main idea, tone, and supporting claims. Precision, conclusion, style, and syntax revisions. So these are questions where they ask you to add sentences, delete sentences, um, to see if they which sentence uh, supports the main idea of the text or the paragraph better, etc. So we have different ones regarding the tone and the style of the whole paragraph or passage. Again, placement adding, emitting, organizing, logical sequences and conclusions. So it's about uh, the organization chapter that we talked about. And graphs, we talked about it last class, applying quantitative information from a graph to the passage. Which means that we've looked at all the question types. Now we're going to have a review over them quickly. And then we have some exercises. And by this, we know the question types and we just need to do more and more practice. Grammar technique, steps, S-E-E. -E. SAT grammar is not difficult, though it is very easy to make a mistake. I think this is true. Some questions are difficult, to be honest, but usually the questions are not difficult the options are tricky and one word changes the answer. And if you are not careful when reading that word, you just make a quick mistake or you quickly make a mistake. Often these mistakes come from colloquial speech and things that we hear in acceptable daily conversation. However, for SAT grammar, do not use your ears. Um, an example of that is um, the lesson about the hypothetical situations. Uh, in everyday English, um, a lot of people use was with if. But in academic English, in SAT, we have to use if I were. So when you read the question, it's not about I heard that in a song, I heard that in a movie or series. Um, I think... Uh, when I think about it, it seems like a correct sentence in English. You need to rely on specific rules, not whether you have heard the sentence or not, because some expressions are colloquial. So do not use your ears, use your eyes. Use your eyes to take a look at every single word in the question and the line sentence and the options, and then you choose the best one. You need to skim edit and eliminate. So this is the SEE. -E. Skim to read quickly, to edit to make some changes, and then the, to eliminate to delete the options which might be incorrect. Let's start with skim. Skim from the beginning of the passage and into question one. Option. Some test takers are fine with only reading a couple of sentences before the question and will go back and read extensively only as needed. Your goal is always to assess the author's overall point of tone, uh, point and tone. Uh, I think we talked about this before. Uh, some people just start skimming the text from the very beginning until the question and then they read the question. Some people start with the question 
and go back to the text and maybe read one or two sentences before the question just to have an idea. Um, and only read the paragraph when they have to, like when they have some organization question or placing a sentence or deleting a sentence, etc. Can I ask a question, teacher? Sure. Uh, you mean when you want to analyze some reading, we have to first read the text and then uh, read the questions? No, I, the idea. I'm saying for organization questions, yes, you need to read the paragraph. When Remember, for example, here we have one, two, three, four. Where do you want to place the sentence? Yes, of course, you need to read the whole paragraph. But for a normal question, um, you, you, you choose what you like. Some people just start reading the paragraph and then they go to the question when they see it. Some people don't read the paragraph. They just start with the question and read only what is before and the question itself. Okay, I have another uh, question about the reading the whole passage. Is it on the SAT very long passage? Very long, like uh, like around the 45 line or 55 or 90 line. Because when I want to analyze some, some reading text, it's taking a lot of time. Yes, I agree. Um, if you have a question to analyze, uh, for example, the question is. Um, I have a question about the system of the of the of the passage. Okay, the passage is like this. Take a look. Here we have one to eleven questions about this one. They give you the title, and then you have paragraph one, two, three. Uh, not so long uh, as well as I practice. Not very long. Because I have another book, the the academic ha has given given to me last two months or one month. And when I want to practice, make some practice, uh, the whole passage is taking about two pages. And it's very short, long and sh and it takes a lot of time. My question is, is it very long or is it very big uh, passages they will give us for it the exam? Varies. Or not? It varies, but like usually it's this long because they're not gonna have one very long text and ask you 20 questions about it. They like to because have- it takes about uh, 40 minutes or uh, 55 if I very focused. If I very focused, it takes about uh, 25 minutes. But are you talking about long texts in reading or writing test? Reading. Okay, reading is different. We'll talk about it when we come to it. But we're talking now about the writing. It's not usually very long. In reading, of course, it's longer because they need to test your comprehension and understanding of the text. Here, sometimes they test your understanding of the organization of the ideas or specific grammar or punctuation rules. So the focus of the question is different. So we'll talk about the reading when we come to it, but yes, reading texts are definitely longer, 500 to 700 words each. Okay, uh, let's get back here. Okay, guys, so let's just focus on what we have here and other questions can be asked later. So we talked about the SEE technique, skim, edit, and eliminate. So we said that some people prefer to start reading the paragraph or others prefer um, reading the questions first. If you see a paragraph in which every sentence is numbered with brackets, you should read the entire paragraph because this indicates that a placement question will be imminent. Remember, imminent is likely to happen. So um, remember, when we have a question where we have some numbers here, it means we're going to have a question. Most probably the writer wants to add a sentence. So in this case, read the whole paragraph. If not, it's your own preference to start reading the paragraph or the questions. Now, edit. Make an initial edit on the passage. Yes, write on the passage. Before looking at answer choices, an edit is a change 
made to the underlined portion of the passage that adheres to the question types of the grammar rules. Uh, for example, if you remember the graph here, so uh, you can actually do whatever you want with the passage. You can underline keywords, you can uh, take a look at the sentences, you can change. For example, here, the best antibiotic is this one. You can just say no and write, for example, gentomycin here. Uh, for example, you have the word slightly, you delete slightly, you write, for example, completely or substantially. You do whatever you want, but it's a good idea to write some, take some notes on the text. This edit may seem daunting at first, so it might be very boring. Yet, yeah, the more you get used to the question types and grammar rules, the easier it will be to make precise edits. Guys, wh why, why do we take notes and make corrections on the text? Because sometimes you can answer the question without going back to the choices. Or with a quick look at the choices, you know what the answers are. Let's have an example. Uh, let's edit for parallelism and punctuation. Let's see. The ideas are known to water filter manufacturers. Oh, sorry, these ideas are known to water filter manufacturers, comma, food scientists, semicolon, and elected officials. Without looking at the options I have here. These ideas are known, subject verb. They are known oh. to water filter uh, manufacturers, just a second, comma, okay. food scientist, semicolon, and elected officials. Ayham, what do you think? Is the semicolon? Uh, I think, uh, I think no, because we have and, and, and it required the comma. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So here we have a list. So these ideas are known to one, water filter manufacturers, comma, two, food scientists, comma, and elected officials, third one. Uh, teacher, when we, when we want to correct some grammar, they will tell us what we should to have to do. Like, for example, they ask, 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 ask us about the grammar uh, or text. We should correct, for example, moralism, argument. They will tell us, or we will have to correct it. No, they're not going to say in the question, this is a parallelism problem. Correct it. No, they're going just to underline the sentence and give you options. But when you do more practice, it becomes clear. So this one, now it's clear, it's punctuation. Um, if you see, for example, this one, without looking at the question. Ah, uh, you mean from the option, I will know very clean what exactly. the problem Exactly. Okay. So this question, uh, it's about uh, the use of the word. I would do, and we have other words. So it's about diction. So it becomes very easy, don't worry. So as we said here, now when we made the edits on the text, okay, now I look at the option, and I immediately see that option C is the same as what I did. So I immediately choose it, and then I go to A, B, D, see if we have anything. So now I know C is probably correct. Definitely A is incorrect. I can quickly take a look at B and D. Five seconds, not this one, not this one. My answer is better. Okay. Now, again, a practice test taker will see the following sentence and know to edit for subject pronoun agreement. Now, as I said, they don't give you what kind of error it is, but it becomes clear. Let's read. Scientists have long known that dirt particles hasten melting by darkening snow and obstructing its ability to absorb the sun's rays efficiently. <coughs> so let's take a look. Um, First of all, its ability. So we're talking about uh, the ability of something. So when we have its, we said it's either it is or it has. And here we have a noun. 
So it's definitely incorrect. What do we usually use before a noun? We usually use it's without any apostrophe. So no change is definitely incorrect and this one is correct. Uh, remember, we don't have this option in English. And here we need a possessive pronoun and we don't need the subject pronoun. Okay. Again, um, practice test taker will see the following question to edit for aptness of word choice. Uh, remember when we talked about confusing words and choosing the right word for the sentence? This is one example. Uh, of course, uh, remember style and the tone. Style and tone are very important in such questions. Sometimes they choose a colloquial one, it should be formal very technical, etc. Uh, and again, you should remember uh, concision, concision, style, word usage, etc. So you need to think about uh, which option is better in style and which one is concise. Let's see. Given these solutions, as well as the many health benefits, sorry, of clean air, comma, the advantages of air filters outdo the drawbacks of their expensive production. Okay, now I have advantages of something, outdo. So outdo has a positive meaning, it means better or more than something. And the drawbacks, drawbacks means advantages. So it means the advantages of this are more than the, advan the disadvantages. So advantages are more important than drawbacks. They are not competing with each other. Okay. Now, here we have the sentence outdo, the word, sorry. Let's take a look at the options. We have no change to keep the same word. And here we have outmaneuver. Out man uh, the word maneuver, it means to move like it's used in the uh, in wars, for example. We say uh, the army had uh, really good tactical maneuvers, so they move in a really good way. And out maneuver, it means to move better. So it doesn't really fit our context here. Um, again, we have outperform. Um, here we're talking about uh, advantages and disadvantages. So, when we say outperform, it means, for example, two football teams, let's say, are playing, and Team X outperforms Team B. It means they do better. But we cannot say advantages do better than disadvantages. So again, C is incorrect. Let's talk about D, outweigh. So weigh, it means you're thinking about two things, and you see the balance between them. So here I have advantages, here I have disadvantages. The advantages outweigh. So it means the advantages are more important. And now this is correct. So option D is correct. To be honest, diction questions are somehow challenging because you need to know the words used, underline the important words in the text, and just go and put this sentence here and see if it works, as well as knowing the exact meaning or the context the other words are used in. Because they all have similar meanings, but they are used in different contexts. Uh, I have a question, please. Uh, why? What is the problem with the outdo in the so, passage? What is the problem with the outdo? In the passage it's just the context it doesn't fit for this one like usually it's not natural english or we don't usually use the word outdo when we talk about having more of something than something else for example like here outdo means to be better than but here outweigh to be more important 
So if we say advantages are more important than disadvantages, yes. But we say like the advantages of having breakfast are better than the disadvantages. Of course, the advantages are better than the disadvantages. So this word doesn't fit here in this context. Okay. Now, if the edit seems difficult, you may require a greater area of reading in order to understand important context clues. Broaden your reading area while keeping in mind the exact question. Okay, here they say that sometimes when you take notes and edit on the text, it's not enough to look at one or two sentences. Sometimes you need to go a bit at the beginning of the text and read a couple of sentences just to underline the key important information. Because um, sometimes you have uh, different nouns and then you have the same pronoun. So you have, for example, Yusuf, Ayham, and Omar. So three names are mentioned. And then in the underlined sentence, you have the word he. Okay, now I have three people. So maybe I need to go and read a bit more to see which one we're talking about. So let's have one example of a I case. Think that's a parallelism, I think. Um, not exactly, to be honest. Parallel because we have to put uh, one, 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 or you, 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 I think. Ah, uh, yes, in this question, yes. But in the example I gave, it's just about choosing which person it is. But in this example, we're going to see, yes, it's about parallelism. But let's see. Uh, let's read. Uh, first, here we have the, the sentence, one can say. Now, one is a general word. So it's generic, it's not specific. What does it refer to? Or is it used correctly? We need to read a bit more to see. So here we start the text by saying, while you may not realize. So here the writer is directly addressing the reader. While you may not realize this at first, calories in a fruit or vegetable are actually forms of solar energy. Your fruits and vegetables undergo, okay, now here we have consistency in tone and style. For example, if you are writing an essay, it's not a good idea to first directly address your reader in the first sentence. And then in the second sentence, we say, for example, people or you say they. So if you are addressing the reader, go with it in the whole paragraph at least. If you are talking about people in general, so keep your pronouns generic, don't be specific. So here, the writer kept the style. Your fruits and vegetables undergo a chemical reaction known as photosynthesis which converts air, water, and other nutrients by using the sun's rays. Because calories measure energy, one can say that eating fruits and vegetables is indeed inherently solar. Now, why did we use one? One can say it means this is um, generic. It means any person can say. But here, you and your, the writer is directly addressing the reader. So if we keep it, no change, it means we have a problem with style. And as we said, style is very important. So we had something here about style. Uh, can't remember where, anyways. So it's important to keep the style. Here, we have a problem with the style, so no change is a problem. Let's take a look at B. If you change one and you write you, that seems a good option because here we have you, your, and we can say, you can say that eating, etc. So here, the style is consistent. It can be stated. Uh, first of all, here we have three words. Here we have four words. So option B is better since it's correct. And again, it can be stated it means the writer is um, 
uh, let's say, disconnecting him or herself from the text and not trying to talk about it directly. But here we have um, facts given directly to the reader. Um, so C is not uh, the best option. And D, delete the underlined portion. Okay, let's try to delete all of it. Because calories measure energy, comma, that eating fruits, okay, doesn't work. I don't have to continue. So B is the correct answer. So do they tell us that this is a style question? No, you should guess that. Uh, how do you know that? By doing more practice and looking at the options. When you look at the options here, you know that this is for pronouns, this is for punctuation, this is for use of words. Sometimes it's difficult to guess when you just look at this sentence. So here, when you look at the options, okay, here we don't have punctuation. We don't have different words. We don't have uh, a specific question about pronouns or a specific tense, not about grammar. Okay, so probably it's about style because now if I just change, <clears throat> okay, guys, how can I know? One can say is correct. And B, you can say is correct. It can be stated is correct. Okay, it means it might be a different kind of question. So I need to read more. Maybe it's about organization. I think, as, as I said, teacher, this is a parallelism. Yeah, definitely. But it asks you about uh, the tone in general. So of course, it needs to be parallel. But you need to know that the tone is direct. So we have to be direct and we should have parallelism. OK. <clears throat> now, um, what we usually do is immediately finding the correct answer and choosing it. Uh, sometimes you have um, maybe two correct answers or three correct answers, but one of them is better than the rest. And you could do, uh, you can use a process of elimination to try to eliminate the options that might not be true. Like, for example, we immediately said option A is incorrect, so we eliminated it. Let's see how the process of elimination work. So it's called POS, POE, sorry, process of elimination. It involves eliminating any choice that does not fall within your initial edit. We said that it's a good idea to edit the text. So if you see that it doesn't match your edit at all, you can immediately delete it. Let's see. If your edit for the underlined portion indicates a change from they to it, go through and cross out they and any plural pronouns in the answer choices. As you see here, um, the other sentences are blurred. But here, from the context in the sentence before, we have they will be remembered. Let's say I read the sentences before and I know that they is incorrect here and because it's plural and we should have a singular pronoun. So before I choose the answer, I can immediately say that A is definitely incorrect because I didn't like it, I change it. Their memories and them remembering are plural pronouns. And in the context, in the sentences here, I know that I need a singular pronoun. So I answer the question by using the process of elimination. So that's why D is the correct answer. Um, who is that sleeping guy? All right. That was Jafar. Yeah, that was me. Sorry. No, no, that's fine. Okay, see, that's why you have your cameras off. You're lying on the bed while we're having the lesson. <laughs> okay. I'm not, I'm awake. I swear to God. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. No problem. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we talked about this. Now, 
Uh, let's take a look at some tips. Uh, do not substitute all choices into the sentences. Trust your edit. So here it says, um, you don't need to take a look at every single choice and go and put it in the sentence if it's correct or not. No, if you are editing and you are sure that a plural pronoun doesn't work, you don't have to go and check every one. Remember, you don't have time. Some questions like uh, organization questions and graphics take a lot of time. So don't waste your time with easy questions like this. Do it very quickly so you can save that time answering the other challenging questions. Control the test by using your edit to eliminate and cross out the wrong answer choices for quick and accurate process of elimination. Okay, we talked about this. <clears throat> now, they show us some uh, common mistakes. We have style changes. Changing an answer to what you think sounds better without using grammar and rules of logic. So remember, it's not about uh, using your ears, whether you think you have heard it or it sounds better. You should use your eyes. You should look at grammatical clues and you should use the rules of logic. And then you say this one is correct or not. Not, it sounds better, I've heard about it, etc. Number two, not using a contextual edit. Again, this is a common mistake. Editing a sentence for style, but not using surrounding sentences and context to determine this edit. Remember, your answer may be correct for the line, but not correct when read in context. Again, some students would say, for example, one can say, now this is correct, no change, and then go to the following question. No, you need to be a bit careful. You need to use some context. So you need to read a bit to make sure that your option is correct or not. Because remember, the SAT is not only about correct and incorrect choices. It's about correct and sometimes which one is more correct than the others. It sounds fine. And this is the biggest problem in SAT. Uh, we are exposed to informal English a lot. So in our mind, we have natural English. I'm not saying it's wrong, but it's informal. That doesn't fit the SAT exam. So choosing an answer because you trust your ear is wrong. Always apply the rules of grammar and context by looking at both the rest of the sentence. You look at context, surrounding sentences, Sometimes it's not enough to look at one sentence. You need to look at a couple of sentences before or after. And you can use SEE. -E. Uh, what was it? It was skim, uh, edit, and then eliminate the incorrect answers. So you read quickly. You, uh, you skim or you read quickly. And then you make some edits on the text. And then using these edits, you can immediately eliminate one or two options, and the answer becomes easy. Okay, so we have some ground techniques. Okay, uh, before we do some exercises, uh, this one was a kind of revision. We talked about most of it, but it has some um, good and useful tips that we could use. Uh, before we do some exercises, do we have any question? No. Okay. Sir, no. I just want to make sure. Uh, skimming is in two important questions and in the paragraph two, right? The skimming. I'm... Can you say that again? The skimming? Yes. Mm -hmm. We should do it in both, in the questions and the paragraph two. Yes. Or that depends on the question. Okay. Uh, skimming is to read quickly. Reading is normal reading. You should read the question, but skim the text. So there's a difference here. When you read something, um, you read at a normal pace, not very fast, not very slow. 
at a pace that you somehow you're somehow able to read and understand at the same time. So you have to read the question carefully. Never skim the question because every single word is important in the question and the choices. But skim, which means to read quickly, you can do that for the text because not everything is important in the text. Only some sentences or part of the sentence is correct, uh, is important, and the others are not. So just skim through it. Okay. Let's take a look at some questions. So here we're going to try and identify the errors. Uh, they help us here because they tell us what type of problem we have. Uh, they did this not actually to help you because in the exam, you're not going to see the type of the error, but it just um, talks about many grammar lessons we talked about in this book. So if you cannot do the exercise, it means you need to go back to chapter one and read about subject verb agreement. If you have a problem here, you need to go back, okay? So uh, while doing this, I would like you to be careful and uh, just take some notes, tick and cross. Uh, when we talk about number one, if you think you understand it and you don't have a problem with this, tick number one. If you have a problem, please cross it. And today after the lesson, you need to go back to that chapter and read. Let's start. Uh, first one is about subject verb agreement. Uh, let's take a look. We have neither of the girls are coming to the party. Uh, anybody can say what the problem is? And grammar? Yes, grammar. Yes, so here we have neither and we have are. But when we have neither and either, we just have a singular verb. So we have a problem with the subject verb agreement. So in English, we say um, neither of the girls is coming. So here we should have is. Okay. This is the tricky blower. Uh, sorry, I mean singular. Uh huh. Exactly. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at parallelism. I think somebody asked me about parallelism on WhatsApp, maybe privately or on the group. I forgot who, but be careful here. If you still have a problem, you can check the chapter about it. I went walking. Comma, hiking. Comma. And I went swimming. I'm swimming. Swimming. Exactly. So we should be consistent and use our structure. And we should delete it because it's redundancy. Uh, delete the whole sent the whole uh, verb and subject. I went swimming. You delete it. Yeah, delete. I went and put swimming because it's redundancy. Um, okay, you could do that, but because it's wrong, not because it's redundant. And again, there's a difference between um, incorrectness and redundancy. Incorrectness, it means the sentence like this is incorrect. But when you say redundancy, it means the sentence is correct, but we are using words that are not necessary, so they are redundant. So here, we're deleting I went, of course, not because they are redundant, because if we say redundant, it means the sentence is correct, because it's wrong. We should have parallel structure. Let's take a look at the second example of parallelism. Her happiness. Her happiness to his, to his cleverness. cleverness. Okay, so. Here we have her happiness was mm -hmm. equal to his cleverness. Cleverness. So we should have a parallel. Uh -huh. So we have cleverness. 
Um, another way to do that, maybe we could say her happiness was equal. Uh, no, it doesn't work. To cleverness. No, no, no. To his cleverness. Let, let's just keep it like this, cleverness. It's the best option. Okay. Uh, number three, um, comparison. Uh, Maha, do you have a question? Yep. Uh, no, no. Okay. All right. Uh, for comparison, number one, I prefer the reading of classic fiction to nonfiction. What do you think about this one? To reading non uh, to reading and nonfiction. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, guys, when we uh, compare two things, we should have a parallel structure. Uh, don't compare um, a noun to a verb. Very, no. So be careful. So here, I prefer, we have comparison, the reading of classic fiction. So this is the first thing we are comparing. The other thing is to nonfiction. Now, if we say, I prefer, I prefer fiction to nonfiction, noun, noun, no problem. But here, I prefer the reading of classic fiction. Yusuf, what do we need to say? What did you say? To grading nonfiction. Mm -hmm. To the reading of nonfiction. nonfiction. And to make it more correct, you can say um, to that of nonfiction. So if you say to the reading of nonfiction, it's correct. But because we have the word reading and we have the word reading here, you know, sat doesn't like repetition. So we change it to that, to that of nonfiction. It means to the reading of nonfiction. Uh, next one. Um, they want to be a lifeguard. No. Lifeguards. Lifeguard. Okay, so we need to have plural. Okay. Um, we'll come back to them later if we have time, because I want to give you at least one example for each. So we still have these three here. Um, let's take a look at subject and pronoun number four. Um, everyone wants their way. What do you think about this sentence? Everyone wants want his, his, his way. His way. Okay, so here we have there, we have a problem. So we have to say his way, correct? Yeah. Okay, guys, you are very sexist, people would say. Um, yeah, yeah. I want to say this, it's, it's correct, I think. Okay. So want, want there, because uh, we didn't mention the thing. So, here we have everyone. Everyone can be a boy or a girl. And in English, if you say everyone and you just say his, uh, people would say that you are sexist. And then feminists are going to kill you. So you shouldn't just write his. You should say his. His or her. Or her, exactly. Um, I'm going to tell you uh, something. I don't like the SAT exam because sometimes it's very strict to some specific rules um, and they don't accept other rules, although they are formal and correct. Uh, this is one of the examples. Everyone wants their way is a perfectly correct sentence in English or formal English in general. And British people like to use the plural pronoun a lot when we have everyone. Um, Americans didn't like to do that at the beginning, but then now even Americans have started using this. But you know, the SAT is uh, mm -hmm. somehow strict about American English, and sometimes you feel that it's, uh, it has some rigid rules. So mm -hmm. everyone wants their way. Uh, if I have this question in an IELTS exam, I would say it's correct. But because I have it on SAT, you should know that 
When we have everyone, you should use his or her. Probably you're not gonna say see there in the answers. If you see it, it's correct. If they don't mention it, it means his or her is the answer. But okay. whenever we say someone, we must refer it as their or them. Like you met someone else, them doing, or they're doing whatever. Yeah, yeah. If you have everyone, someone, etc. Uh, in English, it's acceptable to use they or their or them. But on the SAT, sometimes you're not going to see this option. You're going to see he or she, his or her. And then you should know that this is the acceptable choice. Okay. All right. Uh, let's have one example of pronoun case. Uh, let's take a look at the first one, John and me. John and I. And I. I. So we should have John and I. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, let's take a look at maybe the following one, number six. So we have dangling modifier. Having driven all night, the bed looked so inviting to John. Now here we have a problem with the modifier. Um, remember that having driven all night, so this is um, describing John. The subject. Yes, but John here is not the subject. Where is the subject? The bed. So the dangling modifier doesn't match the subject. So the sentence is incorrect. Uh, how can we change it? Having driven all night, John was so invited to the bed. Exactly. So you either change the second sentence, the second part, and maybe you make it passive to make John the subject, or um, you change the dangling modifier in a way that fits the subject here, okay? But we can say uh, Yusuf's answer is correct to change the second part. So remember, the dangling modifier should match the subject. Uh, let's take a look at adjectives and adverbs. Number seven, the girl runs quick. Quickly. Quick. Exactly. Adverb. Quick is an adjective, we need an adverb. The girl is quick, is it correct? Yeah. It's correct, it's just an adjective, no problem. Uh, let's take a look at irregular verbs. Um, he swum all afternoon. Swim. Swim. Uh, has been okay. swimming. Swim. Or has been swimming. Okay, um, this sentence is out of context, so we can have more than one correct answer. But def definitely not. He, he's correct. one. He's one. Oh, after no. Okay, good. We uh, remember. Can we use? Can we use? He uh, has been swimming. Just give me a second. Afternoon. You said more than one correct answer. As I told you, uh, because we don't have enough context, we can determine which one is correct. We just need to know that swum is past yes. participle. Yeah. And we shouldn't be using it here. Now, for example, you say he, he swam. swam all afternoon in the past. That's possible. It's correct English. If you uh, somebody said he has been swimming all afternoon, yes, present perfect continuous, that would work. Uh, to say he swims all afternoon, uh, it's not really natural English because we have all. So you should say something about all means like it was a longer process. If we say he swims um, in the afternoon, yes. But he swims all afternoon, um, probably correct, but not very natural. If I had other options, I would choose them. Okay, um, let's have a look at uh, verb tense, number nine. Uh, in 1969, she is happy to have met him. She was. Well, she was. Very good. Let's take a look at some idioms. Um, diction. Oh, sorry, idioms. Listening at the music relaxes me. Two. Listening to the music. Thank you. Uh, so remember, guys, 
Um, idiom in sad doesn't mean idioms, like it's a piece of cake or something like that. It means uh, prepositions and um, collocations and expressions. Let's look at uh, diction. Oh, I would like to do the second sentence to see if you remember the two confusing words. I eluded the cops after robbing the bank. Is it correct or not? I elude. No. The verb elude means uh, to refer to something as a reference. Like the writer alluded to something in his article. Um, do you remember the verb that is similar Elude. to? Elude. 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 So guys, um, as I told you, um, you're not going to be asked only about the list in your book, but it's a good idea to memorize it because it's mm. gonna be helpful. Uh, let's have one example from 12. Uh, sentence structure. Uh, let's take a look at one of them. Okay, first one. I was very happy, comma, I loved life. Is Not only comma, semicolon. It's oh, that I love life. Mm -hmm. So we, we have more than one correct answer. Yeah, I was very happy, comma, so I loved life. Uh, that's possible as well, but I think, uh, who said it, maybe Noor Huda, her answer was semicolon, and this is the most concise one. So, of course, you can add a linker, you can do different things, depending on the options, you could do that. Mm. Let's have uh, one example from subjunctive or hypothetical. Uh, if she was finished, so we she have... Will was finished cleaning the house, she would have relaxed. She so, were finished. Uh, okay. Uh, what's, what's your answer, Yusuf? If she were finished. If she were finished. If she had finished. Okay. Somebody yeah. said Would that. have relaxed. Oh, she, were because yeah. Yeah. she didn't really finish. Okay. Um, Yusuf. Would you change your answer or do you think your answer is correct? I'll change it. What would you if say? She had finished because exactly. we have uh, would have, yeah. And um, even Yusuf, if you say, um, if she were finished, here you are using passive and you are saying that the action of finishing is happening to her. It means yeah, she, yeah. as a person, is finished. Okay. Um, if it was, for example, second conditional, you could have said, uh, if she were to finish. Mm. But as you said, the other part is third conditional. So we have to say had finished. Okay. Um, so guys, what do you need to do? Uh, just a second. So we're done now.